Hi, my name is Diana. I am a lover of all things beauty, whether it be makeup, skincare, hair care, or fragrance. And today I want to talk about all the fragrances that I cannot stop wearing this spring and probably into summer. I should probably preface this by letting you know that I am not an influencer. Like I'm not trying to sell you on these products. I just want to share what I've been really loving this spring. Um, starting of like COVID, I guess I really started getting interested in fragrances and uh, fell down the rabbit hole like so many people did. I have a small collection now and I love wearing perfume, talking about perfume, researching perfume. So these are some of the ones I can't stop wearing this spring and I'll probably be wearing them well into summer and I just wanted to share my love with you. Okay, so the one I'm starting with is probably the one that's been around for a while. I don't see it talked about very much online anymore, and that's Mont Blanc Signature. Um, this is new-ish to my collection. Um, I had a, I think I got it from whether, I don't know if it was Scentbird or Scentbox, but I got a decant of it, eight mils, and I flew through it last summer and I knew that I wanted a full bottle. One thing I love about this fragrance that isn't technically fragrance related is it's a pretty affordable perfume. Um, you can find it online for 30, 40 bucks, which to me is a, is a good deal considering that, that this performs like other designer perfumes that I own. As for the smell, <laughs> I can't stop smelling it. It's one of my favorites for sure. To me, this is like a grown-up creamsicle smell. It has one of the top notes I'm pretty sure is clementine. There's some floral in there, but it's really subtle. I believe it has ylang ylang, peony. I know there's vanilla and musk in this. It's not too sweet, but it does have some sweetness to it. I think it's light and airy and kind of, I might even say it's lactonic. I'm also so sorry if you can hear my cat eating. He's like 10 feet away, but the loudest eater ever. Anyway, I wouldn't consider this a gourmand necessarily, even though it has that clementine vanilla creamsicle smell, but I think it's perfect for spring and it's so inoffensive. I could see literally any age group wearing it. And I will continue wearing this all spring. I cannot stop reaching for it. The next fragrance I want to talk about, I have spoken about on other platforms, but I just want to bring it up because it is one of my favorite spring scents. And that's Lancome Idole. Um, this is the first Idole. I know there's a lot of flankers, um, which I've enjoyed every one that I've sampled so far. But this is the only one that I have have a full bottle of and I definitely think that it's full bottle worthy. This I would say is the most floral out of all of the ones I'm going to be showing you today. Um, it does have, I don't want to say a heavy rose note, but a prominent rose note. But again, it's lightly sweetened. There's also pear and bergamot and I think pink pepper in the top notes. I don't really smell the pink pepper. And I do like pink pepper as a note, generally speaking. But it's just, it's lightly fruity in the opening and then it dies down to a soft, floral, beautiful spring fragrance. Honestly, I can see why a lot of people would choose this as their, as their signature scent. It also has jasmine and white musk and patchouli in it. I think there's even cedar in the base note but I don't find it overly woody. I just think this is so feminine, so classy. And as far as designer perfumes go, this one lasts for me all day. It kind of has like a shampoo-y smell. It's very effortless. I, I would even consider this sophisticated. I'm pretty sure Zendaya is the spokesperson for Edol. I don't know, I'm typically not a rose girl, but this is probably one of my favorite rose fragrances, especially for spring and summer. And yeah, it's just an easy reach. I love it so much. Next is a pretty new bottle in my collection. My sister bought it for me for my birthday, which was like six weeks ago. This is Valentino Donna Born Aroma Green Stravaganza. Say that five times fast. 
I want to start by saying that as far as the Valentino Donna Born in Roma line, none of them have been a real love for me before I smelled this one. I know that a lot of people love, love, love Donna Born in Roma. If people are looking for a signature scent, I know that's one that people suggest all the time, but to me, they were just not interesting enough for me to wear. Not to say that I wear a lot of interesting fragrances, but it just, it was not a love for me. None of them have been. Until I smelled this one. I think what really won me over is the top note. I could be pronouncing this wrong, but the top note is Lapsang Sushang Tea. I apologize if I just butchered that pronunciation. But that tea note almost gives like a citrusy lime feeling. It... I feel like I could drink this. It's it's fruity in the opening, and then it also has jasmine in the mid and vanilla in the base, but that tea kind of makes it calming and still sparkling at the same time. I really, I truly feel like this smells like it has more notes in it. I think it's only listed to have the three notes, but it smells so well blended to me. I find this a very refreshing, even though it's a tiny bit sharp in the opening. I, I feel like that passes super fast. I think it's perfect for summer. It's not overly floral if you don't like floral perfumes. Yeah, it's just a bright spring and summery fragrance. And if you haven't smelled it yet, I highly recommend getting your nose on it. My third fragrance here is also pretty new to my collection. It's the Kayali Sparkling Lychee. Um, I smelled this first at Sephora. And this was one of the only fragrances my husband was like, mm, yeah, that smells pretty good. <laughs> Typically, he does not like perfume or care about it whatsoever. This has notes of lychee, black currant, red apple, Italian lemon, violet, rose. I feel like there's a ton of notes in all the Kaeli perfumes. I think it has sugar and vanilla absolute in the base. At first spray, I do find this extremely sharp. I don't like how loud it is at the beginning. But it, this is by far the most fruity of all the fragrances I'm speaking about today. This one also reminds me of a fruity cocktail, but I, I think this is the sweetest of all the perfumes that I'm talking about today. Not cloyingly sweet. I think this is very appropriate for hot spring or summer days. And I'm sure if you're familiar with Kayali, they don't have the best longevity. And I do agree with this one that... Eh, the projection is there, but it doesn't last a long time. And for that reason, I don't know if I will be getting a full bottle of this, but you can bet I'll still be wearing it all spring. This next one was actually a blind buy for me, so I only got the travel size. It's Amber Vanilla by The Seven Virtues. Part of the reason why I blind bought this is because just reading reviews, I had a feeling that I was going to love this. Uh, it's just, it's right up my alley and a lot of people compared it to Glossier U, which I do love and I have to agree, it smells so much like Glossier U, but not identical. I would find this to be a little bit sweeter and a little bit more floral than Glossier U, but not by a lot. There's notes of pink pepper, carnation, lily of the valley, but also isoe super and ambroxan and vanilla, obviously, and then quite a bit of musk, which I do love a musky fragrance. To me, this is a very cozy scent, so not your typical spring and summer, but I would say this is perfect for either overcast, a cooler day, maybe a rainy spring day that you just want to cozy up inside. I think this is like a warm blanket or a warm hug, not super heavy. I'd actually say that this is appropriate all year round, but I've been wearing it lately because it's new to me and I am a huge fan. I'd even kind of compare this to the same category as Queen Reserve Skin. That's another huge favorite of mine for all year round. It stays close to the skin. I wouldn't say that this projects at all. It's more of a skin scent and has an intimate scent bubble. I think the brand was trying to evoke self-love with this fragrance, and I think that this represents that really well. Another fragrance that, if you haven't smelled it, I would give it a shot. This last one is not a perfume but a body spray, but I have to share it because it's new in my collection. It was just released a couple weeks ago, and that is the St. Bart's Way Body Hair and Body Spray. 
This one to me is summer in a bottle. I don't know how to explain how a summer vacation smells like. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is about a, the smell of a tropical vacation. It smells like the beach, it smells like sunscreen, it smells like the pool, and it smells like luxury. Like to me, this is a luxurious, all-inclusive, I just love it so much. The notes in this one definitely took me by surprise because I had no idea. To me, it smells kind of coconutty. And from what I'm reading online, there is no coconut note. There's dragon fruit, orange blossom, tuberose, and musk. Um, it's a fresh floral fragrance. If you've ever smelled Waze body wash or scrub, I think it even comes in a cream. And I think I just read today that they even have a lip gloss that might be fragranced with the St. Farts. It smells exactly like that. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to share this is not only is it a perfume, but it's a hair perfume, which even though I do spray my hair with my perfumes, I don't recommend it because it really dries it out like the alcohol in it, but this is actually meant to be sprayed in your hair. And I honestly love that. Again, this is summer in a bottle and my favorite part about it even though I really was hoping they were going to release a perfume, the great thing about a body spray is it's fairly inexpensive. This went, this retails for $38 Canadian and you get 100 mils. So this should last me a while, especially if I'm rotating through other fragrances. But I love this fragrance. I'm so glad they released it and I can't stop wearing it.